Many of our retro computers are now over 40 years old. Certainly Commodore did not intend for us to be using VIC-20s and C64s for decades after they were produced. There is no reliable way to estimate the remaining lifespan of old chips. However, it is possible that keeping the chips running cooler might help them last longer. This makes sense to me because a higher temperature will result in higher thermal stresses and higher stresses will make things wear out quicker. Okay, so here's the Commodore I like to use for uh, testing out chips uh, from other Commodores. This is the first one I actually bought off eBay to try and repair. I call it the burn unit victim because as you can see, um, it apparently had a 100 watt light bulb sitting on this area for uh, well, probably 45 minutes at least. And this is not the original keyboard. The original keyboard has uh, charred keys in that vicinity. This is a keyboard off of a VIC-20. When I got it, the first thing I noticed, uh, the first thing I had happen was the SID chip that was here basically melted down. Uh, it smelled like burning plastic. I, I have a strong suspicion it was working when this unit was put away decades ago. And then uh, as SID chips are known to do, that just sort of failed on its own. The SID chip that was here was not socketed. I added the socket, uh, which was horrible. And uh, other things, I tried a bunch of different stuff. This was the first Commodore, as I said, I, I tried fixing. Obviously went through some confusion about maybe it was a RAM, socketed that, socketed a few things down here, socketed a, a CIA chip. And then uh, eventually, the answer was staring me in the face. One of these, this one here was a MOS chip. This one here was not a MOS chip, these multiplexers. And as you might suspect, it was this here, which was formerly a MOS chip that had failed. And once I changed that, the computer came back to life. This is how the thermocouple is attached to the bottom of the chip. I'm just using electrical tape. I do not have the fancy uh, Kapton tape. It's somewhat difficult to get things to stick to these chips. I mean, when you're using tape, but uh, this appears to be working. One by DF Robot is a copper heatsink and an aluminum heatsink by Easy Cargo. The Easy Cargo heat sinks I bought were 10 millimeters tall, but there's also a 7 millimeter tall version if you have uh, spatial constraints. The tape for the DF Robot heat sinks does not come applied to the uh, heat sink itself. You have to stick it on and then install the heat sink. That's not really a big deal to me. Uh, what is interesting about this tape, it is made by a company called Dex Aerials. And I believe it is uh, their T4000 tape, which is good for high temperatures, but I do not see anything on the website about it being a thermal tape, that is a tape meant to conduct heat effectively. And we'll see uh, later in the video that that appears to cause a significant problem for these copper heat sinks. The Easy Cargo heat sinks come with the thermal tape already applied. You just peel off the uh, bottom part and uh, install it on the chip. The adhesive tape used is a 3M thermally conductive adhesive tape. It is the 8810 version. Here are the results for the uh, DF robot heat sink. I did two trials and the first trial it did no good whatsoever. It had the uh, same peak temperature. The second trial, I uh, did it a little bit differently. I let it come up to a peak temperature and then I removed the heat sink and it showed an increase of one degree Celsius after removing the heat sink, which means that the heat sink was probably doing about one degree worth of cooling. I did a previous test using that heat sink, but I did not use the tape that came with it. I used Arctic MX4 heat sink compound and I just stuck it to the CIA chip. 
And in that case, it did result in a three degree decrease in the uh, peak temperature. So it did have the ability to do cooling. So it was not completely useless. What that tells me is that the tape that comes with the DF robot heat sinks is likely the source of this problem. It doesn't appear to me to be a thermal tape. It's just some kind of tape. It's a little bit like electrical tape, but it's sticky on two sides, and it must be acting as an insulator. The Easy Cargo heat sinks fared much better. In two trials I did, they each decreased the maximum temperature rise by four degrees Celsius. So instead of having a 21 degree Celsius temperature rise, we only had 17 degree rise in temperature. I'm definitely going to remove the uh, DF robot heat sinks from uh, at least two VIC-20. With the easy cargo heat sink applied to the CIA chip, we had a temperature rise that was only 81% of the temperature rise when no heat sink was installed. If you apply this 81% to a VIC-2 chip that gets up to about 88 degrees Celsius at a room temperature of 22 degrees Celsius, you would probably get about 75 or 76 degrees Celsius for a temperature rise on the VIC-2 chip with the Easy Cargo heatsink installed. And I believe that represents a best case estimate for the effectiveness of the Easy Cargo heatsink were it applied to a VIC-2 chip. In the future, if I do more tests uh, on temperature, I'd, instead of using a thermal couple, I'd like to use something called an RTD, that is a resistance thermal detector. Uh, these things come in a variety of forms, but the one I'm most interested in comes in the form of a chip. It's a few dollars for each chip. What you do is, what the chip has is two leads and some platinum traces on the chip surface. The increase in resistance for platinum is very linear with temperature, and you can measure the temperature by simply looking at the resistance reading you're getting from the chip. And the chip having a flat bottom would also attach much more easily to the underside of any IC in the Commodore.